Intel's new B860 chipset motherboards are here, and I'm here to explain why you probably want one of these over a Z890 board instead. Intel generally offers three chipsets per generation of CPUs. The ZX90 class boards are the top end, the overclockable, and well, the most feature rich. Then there is the BX60, that's the mid-range, and then the HX10s, which are the low-end boards. B860 then is kind of the, the, the one in the middle, the, the, balance, the best balance between sort of budget and features. Unfortunately, unlike AMD's chipsets, which I did a video on last week, check out that in the cards above, Intel does actually segment their boards pretty hard, with the biggest limitation on the non-Z boards being a lack of overclocking supports, even on the unlocked K-series chips. Now, they have relented a little recently, and you can now do full memory overclocking on these BA60 boards, and there is a little control for the CPU too, including power limits, voltages, and core ratios, but it's definitely a more stripped back experience compared to Z890 boards. The main thing here though, is that the CPUs that are launching alongside these chips, the non k parts, can't be overclocked anyway. So unless you're buying a K-SKU part, that's already you know a point for the B-series chipset. And frankly, with how few people actually overclock the CPUs, even if you are getting a K-SKU part, you're still probably better off getting a B860 board anyway. The majority of B860 boards, this B860 plus Wi-Fi board from ASUS included, have overspec VRMs to handle not only the high-end power consumption that these Core to Ultra 200 series chips still command, but decently higher too. This tough board, which is meant to be ASUS's more sort of mid to low end range, has 16 total VRM phases, which is just insane, especially on a board that really can't overclock. I mean, it has two 8-pin EPS CPU power connectors, each of which is generally happy to run a little over 300 watts. The 285K tops out at 250 watts of boost power. You'd have to be pushing the very top end chip considerably harder to exceed the need for one 8-pin. So yeah, this VRM setup is overkill, and most BA60 boards are kind of similar. The VRMs are not a problem here. Storage-wise, you get three total M.2 slots here. The top one connected directly to the CPU, and the lower two running via the chipset like usual. The top M.2 slot still supports PCIe Gen 5, evidenced by the silk screen that tells you that if you were to run a Gen 5 SSD in there, you will be disabling the four remaining SATA ports on the board. Much like running Gen 4 drives in either of the lower ones will do that too. You still get Wi-Fi 7 and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on this board, so there really isn't that much difference. I mean, the only major difference is that the Z890 Tough board that I have replaces the one 20 gigabit USB-C port on the back for two Thunderbolt 4 ports. It does also have a second M.2 slot connected to the CPU for four in total. Basically, if you want a little more connectivity, a Z series board is for you. Think workstation use, whereas your average gamer is better off for the B860 board. It is actually worth noting the CPU compatibility here. Z890 and B860 boards are currently only compatible with Intel's newest Core Ultra 200 series chips, thanks to the almost identical but slightly different LGA 1851 socket up from LGA 1700 for the last few generations. Much like previous generations, it's expected that this socket and these boards will only last for one more chip launch before being end of life. That means that with a BIOS update, these boards should support Core Ultra 300 series chips, but are unlikely to support 400 series or further. That is in stark contrast to AMD, who seems to have a pathological need to have a long service life from their boards, with support guaranteed for at least three more years, and if AM4, uh, you know, the AM4 track record is anything to go by, 
probably a few more years after that too. What that does mean though for these boards is that the older 12, 13 and 14th gen chips do not work in these boards. You'll need a B760 board instead if you want something like a 14400 or 14600K. The biggest reason by far though to get a B860 board over a Z890 board is price. Even looking at the last generation of boards, MSI's cheapest B760 option is almost £100 cheaper. And even for, you know, model for model, the B760 Tomahawk is still £70 less than the Z790 Tomahawk. And for what? For almost everyone building a new system with these sorts of boards, there is functionally no real world difference between them. Yeah, the Z790 can overclock and has some more I.O., but basically no one is going to make use of all of that I.O., so why spend more? For around £100, that's basically a free 2TB M.2 SSD, or a considerably higher end CPU, or maybe even a tier up of graphics card. You will get much more value from you know those few uh, those sort of options than a few extra mostly unused ports on a motherboard. And the good news is, B860 boards are still really well equipped. This B860 Plus Wi-Fi has everything I've mentioned thus far: the the overkill VRMs, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 7, triple M.2 slots, memory overclocking supports, and it even has some nice features like ASUS's easy sort of PCIe slot lock. This is actually a new design that I have to assume is a bit easier to manufacture and install, just being a, a single piece of you know spring-loaded plastic that means you can more easily unlock and remove a GPU should you need to anyway. While the M.2 uh, heat sinks do still need a screwdriver to remove them, every single M.2 slot has a toolless you know, M.2 sort of mounting system for the drives themselves, which is great, and the screws are still captive in the heat sinks, making them a lot less tedious than it used to be to install and remove them. It even appears to have dual BIOS chips and a BIOS flashback button on the back, meaning even if you buy a 300 series chip when they're out, you can flash the BIOS without a CPU installed to update the board to support those new chips. That's pretty cool, right? So yeah, in short, don't waste your money on a Z series board. Unless you're genuinely going to overclock or you need a workstation amount of IO, a B860 board is your best choice for a Core Ultra 200 series CPU right now. Save your money and put it somewhere more useful, like more storage or an index fund. Your choice. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about Z890 and B860 boards? Which one would you go for? Do you really want a Z, you know, a Z series board versus a B series? Let me know why in the comments down below or vice versa if you fancy the other way around. I will leave a link to this board and probably this one in the description as well if you're interested. And if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. There's also plenty of other videos in the end cards, including the uh, AMD version of this video from last week, uh, because they also launched a new set of motherboards and chipsets. So check it out if you haven't already. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.